Welcome back gamers to Top 10 Gaming. I'm Johnny Rogers and I'll be your spectacular guide to today's video. If you happen to be new here to the channel, we put out daily content on all things gaming. So tap that subscribe button to never miss another trend. Plus, we want to know what the most obscure scary game that you've ever played was. While you ponder that in the comments down below, let's jump into today's solo story of the scariest gaming creepypastas titled Kill Switch. The following creepypasta is based on a story of the game Kill Switch written by the archivist on Invisible Games. It more so explains the strange details of this obscure game called Kill Switch. With that in mind, let's begin. In the spring of 1989, the Carvina Corporation released a game that piqued the curiosity of American students everywhere. Its popularity spiked, but sadly ended just as fast as it came up. At surface level, the game was a mix of mystery and horror survival. It was the inspiration and start for games such as Myst and the Silent Hill franchise. Carvina was well known to have a complex narrative in their games, and Kill Switch was no different. The graphics were dull, but in a positive way. There were lots of monochrome with vague gray and white shapes on a solid black background. Everything about this game was creepy. Even as you traverse the levels, a slow MIDI version of Czech folk songs would play. At the beginning of the game, you were given two options for characters. You could either play as an invisible demon known as Gast, or a visible human woman known as Porto. Needless to say, playing as the invisible character had its disadvantages. Gast was very difficult to play with because you couldn't see where you were. Players also found that when playing with Porto, you were most likely to restart the game because it was near impossible to gauge your jumps or aim. The advantage to using gas was that he was much more powerful than Porto. He could breathe fire and had a cool coal steam attack. Although, like I mentioned, he was invisible so once you ran out of your powers it was near impossible to track where you were. As a result, most players went with Porto. Porto's advantage was her random growth that would take place throughout the game. It's noted in this story that an engineering grad from Kansas actually managed to solve the pattern of this power, but unfortunately all of his work was lost. Porto's history in the game is quite interesting as well. You discover that the purpose of Porto being in this game is that while working in a coal mine she was wounded and trapped. Now she has to navigate her way out but it won't be that easy. While investigating the collapse she's faced with demons very similar to Gast. She'll also come into contact with deceased foremen, these odd coal golems, and demonic inspectors from the Sovatic Corporation. The only color seen in the game is these demonic inspectors who have kind of boxy bodies with red clothes. There are no bosses per se in Kill Switch, just the task of navigating the tunnels as Porto shrinks and grows in size. As aforementioned, the story becomes very complex and resulted in many gamers just giving up hope. You must discover magnetic tapes, files, and decipher these insanely complex codes found on iron axes that you collect along the way. A user by the name of Porto881 posted the decoded cipher to a Colombian bulletin board system, although the author writes that upon trying to contact this person, nothing could be found. You discover that the foremen working in the coal mine were being pushed to up their production so they began to lie on reports saying that there were malfunctions and operator errors. Anything to excuse themselves of low coal production. Because of this, the Sovatic inspectors came in. Although they weren't just inspecting the coal miners, they were micromanaging them and even torturing the workers by stabbing them with small knives whenever they slowed down. Many believe that this isn't just a game, but a sly political retelling of what actually occurred in the town of Carvino when the Soviets came in. Once you have solved the axe code, Porto must assemble a tape recorder where a voice says, the fires of the earth have risen up in our defense and flowed into the hearts of the decrepit. We use pre-revolution equipment to waken them and avenge the workers. It's assumed by most when deciphering this message that the fires of the earth are describing demons such as Gast. It also describes the giant machines that caused the inspectors to go crazy as they disappeared in the caverns. The workers never got away either. Many of them were found mangled by the machines. We also discover that the reason for Porto's growing in size and suddenly shrinking is due to the poison poisonous fumes that she's inhaled in the chasm where she fell, although it's still unknown as to whether or not this was all in her head. After assembling the tape recorder and Porto finding all of this proof of what happened in the collapse, you reach one of the strangest yet most intuitive parts of the game. Behind the tape recorder in the chamber, there's a large furnace where coal is turned into coke. 
book. You are given no instructions or clues as to what to do from here. But thankfully for Porto 881, we now know. Many would just stay in the room creating coal until they got bored of the game. However, this anonymous user discovered that the only way to escape is for Porto to ingest the raw coke. This will give players full control over a body allowing you to fight your way out of the coal mine at a regular size. As many would discover when she's a giant, you just can't fit through the remainder of the cave. When you finally make it outside, the screen turns into a blinding white light and just like that, the game automatically deletes itself upon completion. You can't go back and try to play as gas, you can't replay it at all. It's simply gone and gone forever. So that the game couldn't easily be copied, Carvina Corp only released 5,000 copies of the game and never anymore. In a press release back in 1990, they said the following, Kill Switch was designed to be a unique playing experience, like reality. It is unrepeatable, unretrievable, and illogical. One might even say ineffable. Death is final, death is complete. The fates of Porto and her beloved Gast are as unknowable as our own. It is the desire of the Carvina Corporation that this be so, and we ask our customers to respect that desire. Rest assured, Carvina will continue to provide the highest quality of games to the West, and that Kill Switch is merely one among our many wonders. You can't just drop a bomb like that though, saying that Porto and her beloved Gast? So many obsessive gamers wanted to discover what this cryptic relationship was all about, so the hunt for the rest of the games became huge. Because Gast isn't anywhere in sight for Porto's adventure through the coal mine, many people believe that the toxic fumes that Porto inhales are actually Gast. To this day, no player has ever successfully completed a playthrough as Gast. The only remaining copy was purchased back in 2005 at an auction for just over $700,000 by a man named Yamamoto. He knew full well that this was the last opportunity for people to see how the story of Gast would play out and tie into Porto's journey. Yamamoto even wished to record his gameplay for all to watch. Although the only clip that has come up is 45 seconds of an exhausted Yamamoto at his computer and over his right shoulder you can see the avatar choice screen of either Gast or Porto. And Yamamoto? is just crying. And that has been the solo story of the scariest gaming creepypasta titled Kill Switch. Thank you so much for watching and if you enjoyed this video, show us some love by tapping that like and subscribe button. Plus, leave us a comment down below with your thoughts on this story. And for more videos like this one, all you have to do is click that playlist when it pops up on the screen. From Top 10 Gaming, I'm Johnny Rogers and until next time, take care.